Hey guys, welcome back to Eric's Hobby Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to build some realistic pine trees. Let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do for this project is make some homemade flock using some sawdust that I got at Home Depot. I just picked it up over by where they saw pieces to order. So I put some of that in a jar, add some green paint, and I stir that around. I got this idea from watching a video by Miss Cast Terrain. If you guys don't know his channel, go check him out. He does a full tutorial on this. It's really good. But yeah, I follow tutorials too. Why wouldn't I? You gotta get knowledge from somewhere, right? So once I'm done stirring that, I spread it out on a baking sheet, some tin foil, and I throw that in the oven just to dry it out a little bit. It's on its lowest setting. I forget the temperature, but whatever your oven's lowest setting is, I'm sure you'll be fine. Next I take some jute twine and I cut a bunch of pieces and then I cut a bunch of short lengths of the twine once I have a bunch of them bundled up in my fingers. This makes this nice fibrous stuff. This is based on a technique by The Bard's Craft. Go check out his channel as well. He made grass for this. We're going to use this to make some dead pine needles that are going to be going on the forest floor. So as you can see I added a little bit of brown and a little bit of orange paint to get a nice rusty color and it lumped up a little bit. Maybe I didn't do it right, maybe I didn't follow the whole tutorial. I have the attention span of a gnat. So I'm adding a little bit more orange ink, that should help out. And then I push it through this piece of mesh, which is just so I don't get my kitchen strainer dirty, to be perfectly honest. But you just want to be able to break up those clumps, and that's what I'm doing here. And once I've done that successfully and pushed all that through that mesh, I get these nice separated pieces that are going to be perfect for needles. So good, these things are out of the oven. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just push it through my little mesh, gently tapping it, take some of those bigger, woodier chunks and filter them out. And that gives me a finer flock, and I'm happy with that. If you're wondering about the dark green flock on the right, I didn't even use it. I'm just going to save it for later, I guess. This is a fun project though, anyways. Next, taking some of the green jute twine, I cut a bunch of small pieces about as long as the middle joint on my middle finger or my index finger or my ring finger. I don't know, total approximation, just a bunch of lengths. And once I have those cut, I'm gonna separate the pieces into their three component strands with a twist of my fingers. And then with a twist in the opposite direction, that strand should separate out into the fibers. This is what we want. We want these nice separated fibers, perfect. And this is the most tedious part of the project. Separate yourself a bunch of fibers. You could also buy the fibers first, but I like pain, I like suffering. Why else would I do it this way? So once I have enough of the fibers, I measure out some wire. Clip that to length and bend it in half in a hairpin shape and give it a twist on one end to make a little loop. Once I've got that, I load in some of my fibers loading it all along the length of it fairly evenly. And then I close down the other end of the wire and I twist them together. And as they twist together, let's use some pliers that'll make it easier on our fingers. As I twist this together, all of the bristles point out in different directions and look at that. You can see how this is easy to make into a tree. So that works well, and it'd be great for a few trees, but I want to do a lot of trees and I don't want to do all that manual labor. So let's try this again with a little bit more power. That's right, we're using the power drill. Tighten that up on your loop end. Now watch how fast this goes. Boom, and look at that, you got a tree. I wanted to show you guys this technique for a while, but uh, if I'm being honest, I didn't have a power drill until uh, last week when my wife absolutely insisted that I mount the mirrors that she ordered, which have been uh, sitting on the ground for a few months now. So yeah, using the power of the drill, I'm able to bang these out real quick. So I make a whole bunch of them. You might notice that some of them that I'm making have really long stems and very little foliage towards the end. And there's a reason for that. Let's talk for a moment about pine trees. We all probably have seen them around Christmas time. The Christmas tree is probably the most iconic image of a conifer tree that everybody has in their mind, but Christmas trees are bred specifically to have that plump, 
triangular Christmas tree shape. Most trees in the woods will not have this iconic shape because if they grow up around other pine trees, they won't be bushy towards the bottom like that. They will have a long pole to reach them up to the canopy. And it gives this type of forest the appearance of a lot of bare trunks when you're down amongst them. And so I wanted to capture that in this build. In the center of the forest, I wanted it to have that feel of the bare trunks. And you don't see that very often. And most of the store-bought trees you get have foliage from the bottom all the way to the top. So that's something that you're able to do with this technique, which is one of the reasons I really like it. So once I've spun up my trees at various trunk lengths, I give these happy little trees a happy little haircut and get them ready to be the bells of the ball. I smooth them down a little bit just to give the little bit of angularity and you get something like that. How good does that look? Next we're going to detail the trunks. I take a little piece of tin foil and I scrunch it all up and then I squish it down a little bit just to get the maximum possible texture into this little piece of foil. And as you can see, it gives you these nice sort of vertical grooves that's going to simulate our bark texture. Not perfectly, but for this little effort, it's pretty darn good. And we will take it. I lay a bead of glue down on that piece of tin foil, and then with my extra long trunk, I wrap it around. If you are going to make trees for more scattered terrain that have foliage all the way to the bottom, you almost don't even need to do that step because so, so little of the trunk is visible. But uh, since we're making these long boys, we got to make sure we have nicely detailed trunks. Or we're just going to have a twisty piece of wire that's supposed to be a tree and nobody's going to buy it. But look at that. That looks great. Time to paint. We are spraying these with some textured black paint from Krylon. The extra texture just gives the foliage just a little bit more thickness, which I think helps out. I'm not going to dust them with flock or anything like that because, uh, because I don't want to and I don't think it looks that good. But I am going to hit them with the Zenithal Hunter's Green from right over top to bring back some of that green that I just sprayed black. But this is really going to give it a nice volumetric look with highlights and simulate a little bit of lighting with this top-down approach as well and I think they're looking good but watch out and make sure your wife doesn't get your camera if you decide to do this. In here we see an Eric in his natural habitat. You yeah. <laughs> so once those are dry I bring them back inside and draw out a base on some chipboard. The idea here is I'm gonna have three pieces around a center base. This is going to give me some modularity and also allow me to create different layouts, which is the same thing as modularity. But that center base, as we mentioned before, is going to have the long boys on it, and that's going to be pretty cool. So I trim the edges to make them presentable, and look at this, cleaning as I go. Who says I can't be taught? The other really cool thing about this technique is, as I just discovered, you can make dead trees. And dead trees are an essential part of the appearance of this type of forest as well. To make a dead tree, I'll be using my natural jute fiber. This stuff hasn't been tested, but it swears it's 100% natty, so let's go with it. I cut another bunch of pieces, similar to the last time, and this time I separate them only once to their component thread size. I'm not separating them into their fibers, and this is going to let me get a more of a branchy look rather than a foliage look. So I split those all up. They look pretty curly now, but don't worry, we'll fix that. And like before, I sandwich them between a hairpin with a twist type shape of wire, laying them all out like little ducks in a row. And this time I laid down a bead of glue in the middle because I was having a devil of a time getting them to hold in place before I get my first few twists. Because the fiber kind of grabs onto each other, these guys don't. Look at that! Wow, going fast with the editing, Eric. Okay, spray that down with some watered down Mod Podge and twist the ends of these fibers to make them even more stick-like and you're looking for a nice spiky look, something like this. Next, it's time for the secret ingredient. Fresh grout. Season. Tin foil on. Done. Look at that, Michelin quality. Okay, let's take our chipboard stands and add a bit of relief. I trace them out on some foam board, cut that out on an angle with an X-Acto blade and using a piece of offcut of bark, I trace that out. I'm using very precise measuring technologies here. Glue that down with some hot glue. Add a few more layers. 
And just like that, we got some nice relief on the base. Beautiful. Do the same to the other bases. I want the middle section to be the highest one, but the rest should get some foam as well, just for some undulating terrain variations. And next I add some brown paint and some quick dry spackle with a little bit of water. And I get in there with my hands. Not sure why I made this choice, but oh, I committed to it. And I scoop that muck up with my bare fingers, questioning my life choices with every step. And I smear that on there real good. What I'm trying to do is trying to unify any of the awkward joins between the foam board material and the bark. Look at that, what a mess, jeez. And now it's time to drill little holes where I have relief and glue down my trees. And I just do this where it looks good, keeping in mind that I want the longest pole guys right in the center. Other than that, I'm just winging it, put them where they look good. And I'm gonna put that dead tree leaning down like it's fallen over. How good does that look? It looks good, real good, nice. Nice. Cut away, Eric, cut away. Modular, yeah, I get it. Okay, next I add some white glue, spread that around with a popsicle stick and I sprinkle on some sand. Not sure why I chose this piece first. I really should have taken the high ground first, but it doesn't matter. Using my improvised palette, AKA the top of the tin I keep my sand in because I don't know why, because I love chaos. I mix this purple color and I paint it on to the trunks of the trees. I say purple, it's really a gray leaning towards purple. And with a more standard, different, lighter gray, I paint the rock pieces. I dab some of that purpley gray in a really watered down version onto my dead tree, trying to unify it in with the trunk. You can't get all the way in the nooks and crannies, but it's already gray from the grout. Next, I'm mixing up some brown with a little bit of Mod Podge. And with that mixture, I am going to paint all the sand areas. This helps seal down the sand with the Mod Podge and also the burnt umber brown paint gives us a nice base for the next layer of ground cover that we're gonna do. So I apply that to all of my exposed sand. Helps to water it down just a tiny bit, just so it comes off your brush nicely and flows into all the cracks of the sand and you don't have any light areas peeking out. Next, I scrape some of that muddy mixture I made before off my desk because it's important to have a level surface. I dry brush the gray parts with a lighter gray, almost white, this light gray is, and that's starting to pick out some of the details of the rock. And it's starting to look good, I have to say. Next step is the dry brushing of the soil. For this I just use a little bit of white mixed into my burnt umber mixture and this just gives a little bit of definition to all those soil areas. Next I put some watered down Mod Podge under the trees and in some other scattered areas and we're going to pull out those pine needles we made earlier. These really collect in the wells underneath the trees obviously because they fall off of the trees that's fairly straightforward but they look good if they're kind of scattered everywhere. And don't worry, with these tiny fibers, they get everywhere whether you like it or not. So you might as well just embrace it. Now I can already feel what you guys are gonna say in the comment section. You're gonna say, oh Eric, you should have put more, you, uh, you should have put more branches and everything. Wrong, okay, wrong. Listen, because most of my fantasy miniatures are up in Canada, I only have a few Bretonians here right now. So Bretonia is a kingdom that really takes place in the medieval period. And in that period, forests were often quite restricted as to who could access them for what purpose and why. So the main population would not be allowed to cut down trees, would not be allowed to hunt in the forest, that would be reserved for the nobility. But what they would be allowed to do is gather fuel in the forest, which means that medieval forests would be likely very clean at the surface level of things like small sticks. There's the iconic image of the old sort of peasant fella 
with his back covered in small sticks, and that's what that is, is he's gathering his fuel. You know, you see this in uh, Good King Wenceslas is a good example, or Led Zeppelin 4. That's another good example. Hey, look at this, full of good examples today. But yeah, so it also, another, from a practical point, it's hard to stand miniatures on a really uneven surface of sticks and stuff. So sometimes you gotta use history and lore to justify your terrain choices. Yeah, let's get back to it. Next, I'm gonna take my light green flock from before and put it into this never used coffee grinder that I have. Uh, my wife and I have a Nespresso machine, so we've literally never used this thing. So guess what? It's being appropriated for terrain purposes. And I'm just trying to blast this down to a finer texture. I really let it go for uh, quite a while. I actually sped this footage up, but you really can't tell if the footage is sped up when you're using a coffee grinder. It's kind of a funny thing. Oh yeah, you can tell. That part's sped up. Okay, cool. Yeah, I blast it down to dust, basically. And yeah, it's a little bit more fine. You know, there are still some wood shavings in there, and I didn't like how this looked in the next step, so here I am applying it, and it, it makes me cringe to watch this part, honestly, because I didn't like how it turned out, but I'm gonna fix it, don't worry. So you put that weird looking flock on there, and wow. So you know, this actually looks a lot like the flock I had when I was a kid, which I think I bought from a store, but I don't think it looks very natural. Those lighter bits you can see are little squarish chunks of wood fiber, and it just does not look like moss, which is what I wanted to look like. And this is, by the way, not at all an indictment of Miscast Terrain's awesome flock tutorial. I just didn't really pay attention. I'm, uh, I've got a attention span of a gnat, and I like to multitask. And so if you wanna know how to make better flock, go check out his tutorial, as I said. But yeah, I applied this to all my bases because once I'd done one, I knew I couldn't even reverse it. So there's no point in testing it on one because you're just gonna have to do it to all of them anyways and fix them all together to make them unified. I digress. Look, uh, it ends up looking pretty cool. Even that doesn't look so bad. Now that I look at it, yeah, that doesn't look so bad at all. But we are gonna do one more step and fix it up. So what I did to fix it was I took some Mod Podge and green paint and then I added a little bit of yellow paint to that Mod Podge in green and stippled it on to get a nice moss-like effect. And I called it done. So, I hope you guys liked that video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. And if you wanna support the channel, head on over to my Patreon and sign up for one of those tiers. We have a Discord server now, so people are sharing their work in progress terrain projects and chatting, and you can ask me questions, and it's a ton of fun. So, hope to see you guys over there, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.